Hey everyone, my name is Spencer Bauke and welcome to week four of Workout Wednesday Power BI Edition. This week we're going to be covering drill throughs and syncing your slicers. You can see on my requirements tab that I have listed out the requirements for this week. So let's go through these one by one. We're going to want to create a new tab called school view, which we're going to be able to see the breakdown of our metrics by school instead of just conference. We're going to need to create a drill through from your summary view to your new tab called school view. We're going to add a card that lets us know what conference we're looking at after we drill through. And then we're going to make sure that our slicers on both pages are synced the way that we want them. Lastly, this is going to help us figure out why the Mac lost so much money in 2016. We're going to be able to drill into some of that detail and gain some more insight about that. <clears throat> so let's jump right into our solution. So let's go to our summary view and we need to create a view that allows us to see the same metrics, but broken down by school. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my summary view and I'm going to click duplicate page. Now I have a lot of the same, it's obviously the exact same thing as I, I just duplicated, but I want to now rename this school view. Come up here and I'm going to change my title. Oh, show view, school view. Oh, I can't spell either. School view. <clears throat> and now I need to create the bar charts that have my school abbreviations instead of my conference ones. So I'm just going to drag that to the axis instead of the conference abbreviation. <clears throat> Sweet. So now in here I have my school. So actually let's change the titles real quick too because I don't want to say conference. I do want to say schools. All right, <clears throat> sweet. So now this is set up how I want it with my schools in the breakdowns below and my metrics still above uh, with my title indicating that this is the school view. So now what I wanna do is I want to be able to drill through from my first page by clicking on one of these conferences and then in my school view show only the schools that are in that conference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this first breakdown here, my, my school breakdown, and I'm going to go back to that conference abbreviation field that I was using in my first tab, and I'm going to take it and drop it all the way down here at the add drill through fields here. Now, as you can see, that adds this filter down here that says allow drew through when and I'm going to use it as a category um, but I'm going to show you how to set this up uh, in just a second on the first page but I would first note that anytime you drop that in it's going to include an arrow for you to go back so we're just going to drag this out so we can see it um, and I am going to add some text here real quick that just says go back because I want people to know that if you click this it will take you back to your original view. Cool. So once we've done that, let's go back to our summary view and let's click on one of these bar charts because as you can see now when I hover, you can see the little italic text below the tooltip that says right click to drill through. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna right click and this option menu pops up and you now have this drill through option available to you. What you're able to do is go down, select drill through, and you can see that the tab that I just threw this conference abbreviation field onto is available uh, in this pop out. So I'm going to click on school view. Now what just happened? That filter that I set up or that drill through filter that I set up um, in this bar chart now got populated with the SEC. So now everything that I'm seeing here is just the SEC. 
So now you're able to see all of our schools that make up the Southeast Southeastern Conference and, sh and see what revenues, expenses, and profits were associated with each school. And now you're able to do, you're still able to have that same filter interaction here to show each individual school. So we can look at Alabama, we can look at Florida's history, we can look at Kentucky, so on, so forth. So now let's go back to our requirements. So that's so that fulfills our drill through requirement um, uh, for this week. Now what you can do again is when you click go back and you have to click control and go back when you do these icons in desktop, when you publish to your workspace, that will just be a single click. But for now you have to do control click. As you can see, when we go back, we're back at our conference level. And if we want to go see another conference, we can right click on another one, drill through. And now we're looking at the Pac-10 or Pac-12 or whatever it is these days. Honestly, I forget how many teams are in each conference. <clears throat> so we click go back. So that is our drill through. We set up our drill through. So we've created our school view. We've set up our drill through to our school view tab. Now what we need to do is we need to add a card to allow users to know what conference we're looking at in our school view. And we also want to make sure that our slicers in the two views are not synced. And I'll tell you why I don't want it like that in just one moment, but let's first add our card so that we can know what school folks are looking at when they go to this second tab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a card and I'm going to add the conference abbreviation to this card. Now, because this is a text field and I'm dropping it in a card, you can do some, some of the same calculations that you would do on any other text field, like distinct count or count it. And then in this case, I want to, you can also do first or last, but in this case, I'm going to choose first. And because I will only have one once I drill through, it's just going to show me the field that I'm looking at. So I'm going to do some quick formatting. I'm going to choose no background and make it transparent. I'm going to put a little border around it. I'm going to color it a light gray color. I'm also going to make the data label much smaller because I don't want it to appear that big on my, on my report page. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to actually turn off this category because we know what this means uh, when we're doing this drill through. So it will be understood that this is the conference that we're looking at. So let's format this just a little bit more. Let's put this up in our header and sweet. Actually, I think I want to go more, uh, a little darker with the border. Sweet. Okay, so now you can see that this is on the Pac-12. So let's go back and let's just experiment real quick. Oh, I see, hold on one second. So I went back from the requirements page. That is one thing to watch out when you use that uh, go back function instead of directing it to a specific page. But again, that will be in a later challenge. Just know um, that it's gonna send you back to the most recent page. So let's drill through for the ACC. I'm gonna drill back here. Now I can see I'm looking at the ACC. I see my ACC schools here. My revenues, expenses, and profits have been adjusted and I'm gonna click go back and it takes me back to my summary view. Sweet, so let's do it one more time. Let's look at the Big 10. Everything is as I would like it. So now for our slicers. Right now, if I select a slicer and I say, I'm just going to look at 2017. If I choose to go back right now, you can see that there is no years uh, selected here. This may be because I've already messed with the slicer settings initially, but I believe that this will default for most of you uh, watching this video to showing 2017 here. So let's just... Let's select 2017. Let's act as if that had gone to 2017. Uh, and like I said, that should default to showing the same thing once you add the slicer, but I'm gonna show you why that is. So if you come up here to your view ribbon and you go to your sync slicers, 
option, you're going to get this pane to pop out. So all these different options here will show up as different panes, just as your fields, visualizations, filters, and, uh, and now seeing slicers have shown up. Let's click on our uh, slicer here in our summary view, and you can see that if we were to sync, click this button right here, this is the sync button, and this is visible, so you can actually make them not show up um, on here. But if you come here and you add um, uh, the the check mark, these are now going to sync. Anytime you select a value on one page, it's going to affect the value in the other. So let's just check this out. I'm going to choose 2016, and now I'm going to drill through on the big 12. I drill through here, and now you can see, actually, let's go back real quick. Um, if you come here, you can see that this slicer has now um, carried over to the next page. I don't necessarily want that. The reason I don't want that is, and I'm going to show you here in just a second, is when I come to this investigational page, it, maybe I do want to go through uh, some different years, um, you know, in investigating, oh, what happened this year, what happened, this, you know, that year. I don't necessarily want those options to be taken back to my original page. So let's say we drill through and this is, you know, set to 2016, and I'm just investigating some things because, you know, I see in my trend line, oh, you know, maybe I want to check out 2013 because there's a dip in expenses. I don't necessarily want to go back and see just 2013 selected here. So that's why I want to unsync my slicers. Again, if you come here, you look, you can see that my slicers are not synced using the selection, and if I were to click this, then it would sync my slicers with one another. So for this instance, one of the requirements is to make sure that they are not synced. Cool. So now let's go back to our requirements page and we need to figure out who contributed most to the Mac losing so much money in 2016. So let's go to our summary view. Let's find our Mac, the Mid-American Conference. And let's drill through to our school view. We want to check out 2016 because that is where we lost, like we figured out last time, a little over $8 million uh, in profit. We can go down here to our school breakdown for the profits and we can see TOL. That is Toledo. Holy Toledo. They... <laughs> Terrible joke. They lost a tad over $5.3 million in 2016. So there you go. That is who to that is who contributed most to that loss in profit for the year 2016. You can also see that Kent State and Ball State didn't necessarily help, uh, but the answer for that last requirement is Toledo. So that wraps it up for this week. We've created a secondary view where we're able to see our schools. Uh, we're able to drill through from our summary view to choose each of the conferences that we want to see further. We have added in a card. So now we know what conference we're looking at when we're looking at the numbers below. We've unsynced our slicers so that we're able to have more flexibility in this investigational layer. And we figured out that Toledo was the one most responsible for the Mac losing money in 2016. So that is all for this week. Again, we thank you all so much for participating uh, in this week's Workout Wednesday Challenge. We hope you learned something this week and had some fun doing it. Um, we are very appreciative of you all. Uh, please share your solution on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever social media you use, and you can tag 
the other workout Wednesday members so that we can see your contributions. Please also make sure to fill out the submission form on workout-wednesday.com so that we can track the participation throughout the year. We can see who's participating, what topics were more popular than others so that we can get a feel for what people are most interested in and help the community out further. So thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this week's challenge and we will see you next week.